Hi, LA Parent. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Carolyn Richardson, and I am here with Dr. Harvey Karp, creator of The Happiest Baby on the Block and the Five S's, who has now created the dun 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 <laughs> no. No. Our little baby. It was five year pregnancy with this with this yes. child, yes. Wow, that's a long time, right? <laughs> have you slept during that time? I have. I have and I've been eating much more lately as well. So. <laughs> there you go. Um, today we're gonna talk about sleep tips because he is the expert on how to get your baby to sleep so they can be happy. <laughs> and so you can be and happy. You can be happy too. Exactly. <laughs> That's important. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the snow. We'll do a little demonstration and talk about how we can kind of create a routine mm -hmm. that supports sleep. So that and you know, it's not a joke about needing sleep to be happy. Yeah. Because we all get more lonely and grouchy mm -hmm. and even postpartum depression. Uh -huh. And anxiety are triggered by not getting enough sleep. And even overeating because you're eating pie at 11 o'clock uh -huh. at night and you're not exercising. And, yes. and it changes your metabolism so that it's hard to lose your baby weight. So sleep is like pretty key. There you go. Now, so many of us know that, right? <laughs> I can definitely attest to that. I have three children and I have definitely changed my routine with mm -hmm. eating and sleep since I've had children. And sure. you can't try to go back. Can you talk about how you can create a new routine um, mm -hmm. when you have a child versus trying to get it back, get back the time that you used to? Yeah, well, you got to stop <laughs> doing Facebook and social media. I don't know what, you know what I mean? You, you, have to, you have to really be careful about how you manage your time because you have so much less of it. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things that's important for me to kind of yeah. communicate is the idea that it's hard. It's really hard parenting today compared to 100 years ago. I mean, in some ways it's easier, right? You got right. indoor plumbing and things like that. Right. But you used to have four or five people helping you, mm -hmm. right? Your grandma, your auntie, yeah, in the same house. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of pressure off of a parent. Right. Um, and today it's like all on your shoulders and you have to work and you have other things to do. Right. And so it's really important um, uh, to make sure that you're getting sleep. That can kind of fall through the cracks, right. but you end up paying the price for it. And you can't, it's hard to be the parent you want to be mm -hmm. when you're just running on fumes. Uh -huh. yeah. So maybe you can tell us about, talk about expectations. Mm -hmm. Expectations for baby to sleep and expectations for you to sleep. From newborn to say three months. Sure. How, how much should you expect to sleep? <laughs> and how much should baby be sleeping at Well, of course, time? everyone tells you, that, oh, you're never going to sleep again. <laughs> and it's the hardest thing that you ever did. And, yes. and that can be true. Mm -hmm. But here's an interesting thing. We use technology in every aspect of our lives, our computers, our smartphones. And yet people now are talking about, have you heard of these cardboard boxes? Put your baby in a cardboard box. Yes, or, the mini finished boxes. Yeah, That's that kind of thing. Yeah. Or even putting a baby in a bassinet. I mm -hmm. mean, that's just flat and not moving. Right. Here's the thing that people don't realize, that inside, before the baby's born, mm -hmm. you're constantly holding them. You're constantly rocking them. With every breath you take, mm -hmm. your, your, your diaphragm is going down, your baby's being rocked. And the right. sound inside is louder than a vacuum cleaner, 24-7. Yeah. So to suddenly put a baby in a quiet room, in a flat bed, not moving, yeah. That may seem right to you, but it's sensory depriving to a baby. Uh -huh. They need to be swallowed. They need to have motion. They need to have sound. And if you give them that, suddenly the sleep gets a whole lot easier. And so when you ask what's appropriate expectations, well, of course the baby needs to eat a lot in the beginning. So they're going to be waking up every three hours or four hours. But they don't need to necessarily wake up every two hours at night. Okay. Um, you can you want to feed them a lot during the day. You'll feed them every every hour and a half or two hours during the day. Yeah. But at night you're hoping for a three or four hour stretch in the beginning, and then eventually that goes to five and six and seven. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen is that if you don't give babies the right sleep cues, the right sound and motion and swaddling. Mm -hmm then it's much harder for them to organize their sleep. Okay. And even by six months of age, you have half of babies not sleeping, I mean, waking up at night, okay. even, even by then. So it doesn't happen automatically. You have to guide your child into better sleep. Mm -hmm. So when you say in the beginning, mm -hmm. so you're saying you bring a baby home, three days old, and at night you can leave that baby not eating for three to four hours? Well, the baby will tell you. 
Mm-hmm. The baby will tell you. If the baby's crying, hey, it's your job. You better feed your baby, right? <laughs> feed your baby up, hold them. Right. And especially at three days, you're just establishing the, the nursing or, or the, even the bottle feeding. Yes. Um, once that gets established after a week or two, okay. then you're seeing the sleep kind of start, you know, increasing a little bit. Okay. But to be honest with you, even the first days of life, if you use the right cues, and this is what we see with SNU, is that even in the first days of life, you're starting to be able to see a baby go for three hour stretches, even four hour stretches. Okay. That's well within the range of, of normal. Mm-hmm. And then the baby's got plenty of time during the day to get those calories in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Now, you didn't get to mom. <laughs> well. How, how much should mom expect to sleep? I mean, they say sleep when the baby sleeps, but then that also I leaves know. mom without having any personal time. I know. It's hard. And that's why it's hard doing this on your own right. without help. As a matter of fact, we think of this as being your own personal grandma, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or like your night nurse, because you can put the baby down, take a shower, or yeah. have breakfast with your three-year-old, or get a nap yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so in general, if you look at the, there are a lot of studies on this, mothers sleep on average about six hours a night, mm-hmm. which doesn't sound too bad until you realize it's six hours broken up into little tiny pieces. Yes. And it's hard to get efficient sleep, and so you end up feeling more and more tired day after day after day. Yes. And, and like I was saying before, it's not just fatigue, it actually changes your mind. Studies show if you're getting six hours of sleep, you have the same mental impairment as someone who's legally drunk. Wow. You're making mistakes, you're not a safe driver, you're forgetting things, and your brain just doesn't work as well. Mm-hmm. And you get moody and, and more unhappy. Yeah. And um, and so the reason that I think that's important for people to recognize is what I call drunk parenting. If I were to ask you, would you ever bring your baby in bed with you or accidentally fall asleep with your baby in bed with you if you were drunk or high? Yeah. You'd probably hit me, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you say, how? Why would you even ask? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but when you're sleep deprived, mm-hmm. you're the equivalent of drunk. Yeah. So mothers all so if I asked you, do you ever go to bed with your baby and fall asleep with your baby in bed with you and you're very tired? You're going, Well that's me that's my life. I'm always very tired. Yeah. And so it turns out that parents get confused. Is bed sharing normal? Is it not normal? It's a danger. Mm-hmm. And if you have the baby right next to you in a bassinet or a snoo or a co sleep or whatever you choose, you got the baby there so you can nurse the baby, you can take care of the baby, right. but you're not taking a risk with your baby's life. And that's a really important message. Mm-hmm. That's important. So we've, we've got kind of what we can expect, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how do we get other people to respect the routine of the baby and the mom in terms of sleep? What are some ways that families, husbands, even families coming over to visit mm-hmm. new baby, yeah. How do we set those boundaries? So, different people have different schedules and routines. Like if you have three kids and you have another baby, or when you had two kids and you had the third baby, it's not the same as when you had your first baby. You don't have the luxury of making this neat little schedule. You know, every two hours I set my alarm. It doesn't work that way, right? You're running kids to school and doing this and that and the other thing. Your baby's kind of sleeping on you wherever you're going. And that's okay. That's life, you know, that's a realistic. But in general, if you can kind of have a, a schedule where you're feeding your baby every couple of hours during the day, and waking them up if yeah. you have to, they get into a better routine. Mm-hmm. If you let them sleep as much as they want during the day, they may sleep four hours during the day and then they're up every two hours at night. Right. Not as convenient. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to having people come over to your house, mm-hmm. that's, you know, a blessing or a curse, it depends mm-hmm. on the people. But um, what I would recommend is that you do set some ground rules up. Okay. Have a note on the door saying, when you come in, please wash your hands and put on a t-shirt. I'd have a stack of oversized t-shirts. Okay. People put that on as soon as they come through. That way they don't have, they have germs. Germs are like cooked rice. They stick yeah. to you. Mm-hmm. And if you put a little cover shirt on, then whatever germs you've got on your shirt from hugging your six-year-old right. are not going to be transferred to the baby. Right. So, ladies, you hear that? Mm-hmm. Get all your husband's old t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Put them in the front. 
right. <laughs> all the new people coming. Right. That's a great tip. And you know what? When you do that, you sound like you're overprotective, but you never had a better reason to be overprotective than, yes. than caring for your young baby. Because in those first three months, it takes three months or four months even for a baby's immune system to get strong. Right. And if they get sick in those first three or four months, it's a, it's a hard time. Mm -hmm. The babies are uncomfortable. Sometimes they even have to be hospitalized. Mm -hmm. So it's worth being extra protective. On the other hand, you can go outside for walks. You can get fresh air. Yeah. You can go to a restaurant if you want to. The germs aren't going to leap on your baby. It's contact. It's right. you opening the door, and then you get the germs on your hand. They're right. holding an escalator, mm -hmm. you know, handle. Um, so wash hands a lot. Stay away from groups of people where there might be coughing or smoking right. or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have people in the house, yes. also have a list of things that they can help you with. Okay. Cleaning the dishes, um, helping to cook something, chop mm -hmm. the vegetables, do the laundry. Um, that's asking a lot from people, but this is the time to ask. And then you'll pay them back when they have their baby, right? Yeah. I mean, and you know, people like helping. They do. And they feel like they've given you something real, not just that here's a onesie for your baby. You know, I gave you something that really was sincerely helpful. And memorable. And memorable. And memorable. Um, I will be candid and say, my first time around, I didn't want any help. I kicked people out of the house. I didn't let people visit. But when I had my twin boys, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three twin, years ago. You're twin boys. That's <laughs> two. <laughs> that's two at the same time. <laughs> I literally had a schedule of days when certain people could come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all my church friends could come mm -hmm. on a certain day because Sunday afternoons were, was pretty convenient for right. them. Family could usually come on, over on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a way that I allow people to right. always be open to coming over, mm -hmm. but then also setting really strict rules about this is what we do. When you come over, this is how you can help me. It's so hard when you have that first baby, but believe me, when the second one comes around, you just have this, this freedom of knowing that you need a village. Right. And, and then it becomes open. So new moms, let people help you. And, and lay it out, write it out. Mm -hmm. Write it out so that people really know it. My mom had a saying, she said, don't be stupid polite. <laughs> You know what I mean? Don't yeah. just like say yes to everybody. You have to be able to say no sometimes. You have to say, look, I love you to come, but I really need help. Can, can, I, can I count on you? Can yeah. you help me out? Yeah. And people do feel good about that. That's good. Yeah. So there's um, a controversial uh, part of putting baby down. Mm -hmm. What do you think about always having alternate times or alternate parents putting a baby down each night? Mm -hmm. And what would be the benefit of that? What, what's the same? Well, there's one that the baby ends up getting attached to mom because mom always puts the baby down mm -hmm. and has her way of mm -hmm. soothing the baby, whereas dad doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so times, and this is just an assumption, dads, I do not want to put you guys out. Mm -hmm. You're the one putting baby down. Please excuse me. But the general thing is one parent usually is putting baby mm -hmm. down most of the time, and so they get attached to that routine, and then their parent now feels obligated to always be there. And when routine needs to switch, then the sleep changes. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what that reminds me of. The interesting thing it comes to breastfeeding and giving bottles. Yeah. Because in those first couple of weeks, when you're establishing breastfeeding, mm -hmm. you don't really want to give bottles because it can confuse a baby how to right. suck. But after three weeks or certainly by four weeks for sure, but really after two to three weeks, I would start a bottle mm -hmm. once a day. You want to give a baby a bottle. Yeah. For the very reason you're talking about. What if mom gets, God forbid she's sick, or she's got to travel, or she's not available? Mm -hmm. You don't want a baby not having the ability to take a bottle. Yeah. And, and sometimes if you wait four or five weeks, they refuse. They just don't know what it is, and they won't take it. And yeah. so the same thing with having different people hold your baby. Mm -hmm. um, there's no question the baby's going to get a more attached to the mother anyway, right? Yes. The nursing, the closeness, it's just the way it, it works. That's right. what babies are like. And later on, it's payback time, because when, once the child gets to be 18 months or two years, sometimes they're pushing mommy away. Yeah. They only want daddy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it I goes back all and these forth. Things. I'm trying to be quiet. Because all yeah, you live that associate with me. Um, I breastfed my daughter mm -hmm. for two years, and we did not give her a bottle after that five or six weeks. So it took her until six months. Yeah, yeah. And you were lucky that bottle. she even took it then. 
And I mean, at that point, she didn't even need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were getting to the point where right. we were eating she solid foods. Yeah, she could have little sippy cups. Mm -hmm. It was so hard. It's so hard yeah. when your baby doesn't take a bottle. But it's, it's not your tip. fault. But Oh, you, you know said, what else is a good tip? Yes. Here's another good tip. Okay. Listen to this one. We found one. You made it. Which is before you have the baby. Before you have the baby. Speak to your doctor to check if you have flat or inverted nipples, if you're going to be breastfeeding. Okay. Because once your breasts fill with milk, if you have a short or flat or inverted nipple, it's going to get even flatter and shorter, hard for the baby to latch on. And so you can do things to help elongate the nipple before you're born or to prepare for things to help the baby breastfeed so you don't discover that in the hospital and then you have all sorts of problems getting the baby on the breast. Very interesting. So, um, but in terms, of, um, in terms of setting up the routine, what you're hoping is that the baby gets used to, uh, is flexible enough to be able to be put down by anybody. Okay. But here's another helpful tip, okay. which is people tell you don't always rock your baby to sleep, don't always nurse your baby to sleep because they don't know how to fall asleep without them. Yeah. But you can't not nurse your baby to sleep or not rock your baby to sleep. They fall asleep in your arms. What are you going to do? You can't keep waking them up. And it's the most beautiful thing you ever do with your baby is to let them fall asleep at the breast. Yeah. But if you do that and then you slide them into the bassinet, then when they wake up in the middle of the night, they don't know how to put themselves to sleep. Right. So what are you supposed to do? Super easy. Okay. The answer is something that I call wake and sleep. Okay. So let the baby fall asleep in your arms or at the breast. Then you ease them into the bassinet and then you wake them up. In the bed. In the bed. You, you wake, wake the baby you wake up, them up. In the bed. I know people are turning this off all across America <laughs> no. right now. Um, so what happens with that is the baby's drunk from the milk already. The baby's yeah. been fed, the baby's satisfied, the baby's swaddled, you got the white noise playing. Mm -hmm. So even if the baby fusses, you can jiggle the bed a little bit, put the baby back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And in that 10 seconds, they're learning to fall asleep without a breast in the mouth and without being in your arms. And that's how they start learning to self soothe Okay. Wake the baby up after. Exactly. So the myth <laughs> is never wake a sleeping baby. And the truth is you always wake a sleeping baby okay. when you put them down. And okay. that gives them an opportunity to learn something new, mm -hmm. which is how to fall asleep. Because that's another myth. People say, when does a baby sleep through the night? Yes, that's the big question. Okay. Some people say six months. Some people say eight months. What Turns is it? Out, never, never, they never sleep through the night. A child never go. sleeps through the night. An adult never sleeps through the night. We all wake up two, three, four times a night. Now, you may not remember it unless when you wake up, something's wrong, like your pillow's on the floor or you smell smoke or something like that. Then you're going to remember you're going to wake up all the way. But if everything's copacetic, your eyes are going to close. You won't even remember waking up. So it's the same thing with babies. They're going to wake up three, four times at night. But if they wake up and the world is pretty much the same. Now, if it's totally different and when I fell asleep, there was a breast in my mouth and now there's nothing here. I'm all by myself then they're gonna wake up all the way. Okay. But one of the things, it's one of the benefits of snoo, when they wake up, they are still got the motion, they still got the sound, they're still closely, snugly enveloped in the sleep sac. Right. That helps them fall asleep better, and that's why we see, even in the first weeks of life, babies sleep an extra hour, even two hours more. And by the time they're two, two and a half months of age, they can sleep seven, eight, nine hours in a row, which was never possible before. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not, here's the thing, you go, that, I'm praying to God, or, you know, that sounds too good to be true. It does. It really does, Dr. Carter. But let me ask you a question. If grandma were there all night long, holding and rocking your baby, and when the baby got upset, she rocked and shushed a little bit more, mm -hmm. would you believe that grandma could help the baby sleep more? Yes, grandma could do that. Okay, I know she could. Well, this is like your little, your little, you know, um, automatic grandma. Um, but seriously, <laughs> when the baby, babies are learning machines. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to suck at the breast or even at a bottle the first time they see it. Right. But after a week or 10 days, they just see you open your bra and they, they know. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. They recognize it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the bed. Once they get used to the motion and the sound, which they're really used to before they're born, mm -hmm. they wake up, they go, oh, everything's cool. This is okay. And they fall back asleep more. But mothers will tell you, and this is a controversy like on the internet and stuff like that, 
But aren't I ignoring my baby? Shouldn't I be there every second? Shouldn't I be holding my baby all through the night? Yes. The answer is no. You shouldn't be. If you're holding your baby all night long, the baby's going to fall asleep in bed with you. It's going to be a danger. Mm -hmm. And every normal family always had your older daughter, your cousin, your mom, your older sister holding and rocking that baby. So it's normal for you to have somebody else to help you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have somebody else, then you have something else that helps you. Are you a bad mother if you use a swing? No, but we can't let babies sleep in swings anymore because if their heads go forward, have trouble breathing. So this is now the safest baby bed ever. It's not only the most effective mm -hmm. at promoting sleep and reducing crying, because mm -hmm. it will rock the baby when the baby cries and it helps the baby fall asleep faster. Mm -hmm. But it's also the safest baby bed ever made because of the special sleep sack mm -hmm. that keeps babies safely swaddled and prevents them from rolling over. Right. And it's also the safest bed because it's a swing that's a flat swing. Mm -hmm. So they can be rocking without the risk of their head going forward, like that can happen with a, with a rock and play or a swing or things like that. Right. One last question. Uh -huh. <laughs> How long can we keep baby in a snoo? Well, a snoo is built to, to be as big as a nine month old, 90th percentile boy. Okay. But since it's a kind of a bassinet type product, it's really only recommended for the first eh, six months or so. Okay. Um, and the good thing about snoo is that since the baby's secured, to the bed, they can't roll over, but they also can't climb out of it. And so you know that even with your five or six month old, that they're not gonna accidentally fall out, mm -hmm. which is important. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's a really good question. And another question I get all the time has to do with the head jack. You know, like, is this jiggly thing, is that to shake a baby syndrome? <laughs> right. Or is that too much for a baby? Right. But imagine what your baby's head is doing when you're, in an, when you're pregnant and you're in an exercise class, mm -hmm. or, when you're, um, or when you're hiking up and down the hills, or you're hustling up and down the stairs to be able to, you know, um, go someplace. Yeah. Your baby inside, their head is going up and down like that. Okay. So, and in a car ride, your baby's head is jiggling like that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, when the bed moves quickly, it's just a quarter of an inch back and forth. That's okay. very, very safe for a baby. Okay. Good. So, I said last question, mm -hmm. but there's another question. Okay. It's a little pricey. Mm -hmm. So how can parents who are interested in going to SNU get, get a little ease on the price? Well, a couple of things. I mean, obviously, we just came out with this. So just right. like with your iPhone, you know, it's going to be more expensive <laughs> when it comes out. And once yes. we can, you know, be able to bring down the price of manufacturing it, we'll be able to bring down the price of buying it. Yeah. Um, we're already starting a program where we can rent these, actually, in Santa Monica. So we're trying to help people out that way. Okay. But I want to say one thing about price. So because it, you know, people, $1,000 bassinet, that's like ridiculous. And it would be if it were a $1,000 bassinet. Mm -hmm. But it, that's, it, it, this looks like a bassinet. But that ain't what it is. It ain't what it is. <laughs> It is, like I said, this is your own personal night nurse. Yeah. And $1,000 over six months, that's the equivalent of $6 a day mm -hmm. for the first six months. So right. you can either blow $6 a day on coffee and Red Bull because you're so <laughs> tired. That's the only way I can buy. <laughs> but it's like, then that's normal. But for the same price, you get the safest, most effective baby bed yes. ever made. And you know what? It's then it's it's even $3 a day if you use it with your second baby or mm -hmm. sell it when you're done with it. Right. And so... Three dollars a day mm -hmm. for six months. Not that everyone can afford that, but it's yeah. not out of the reach of most people. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a bed either. It's a bed. It's the safest swing. It's the most sophisticated white noise machine. It's three organic swaddles and the sheet. It's yeah. an extra hour to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. It's peace of mind. Your baby can't roll to an unsafe position. Yeah. And it's your 24-hour night nurse. So I mean, for six bucks a day, that's that's not bad. I would say. I would <laughs> say I purchased all of those things individually. <laughs> Many times uh -huh. over. So that's yeah. really good. Thanks. Okay. You have been with Carolyn Richardson of LA Parent and Dr. Harvey Carp of Happiest Baby. Um, we also want to cue you in. We are doing a giveaway for Happiest Baby on the Block and Happiest Toddler on the Block. You're going to get the whole bundle of DVDs, books, and all the things you need to help your baby sleep. The snow isn't included in the giveaway, <laughs> but you can buy the snow. <laughs> and you know, the toddler stuff starts at eight or nine months of age, so earlier than people think. Oh, okay. But it does the same kind of magic that the happiest baby does, that okay. doing some simple things can reduce temper tantrums and help your child be more emotionally balanced and healthy. Yes. Yeah. I used it. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Carolyn. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye now. Bye. Good to see you.
Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Karp, and this is our new SNOO. It's the safest, most effective baby bed ever made. It's a bed that can increase your baby's sleep, reduce crying, and help train your baby to be a better sleeper in the first uh, weeks of life even. So the way it works is that you press the button, and that starts it. And it moves, it rocks back and forth and makes white noise to imitate the baby's experience in the womb. Those of you who have heard of the, the happiest baby on the block know about the five S's. And the concept there is that um, babies need a fourth trimester. Baby horses can run the first day of life, but our babies are really immature by comparison. And they need lots of holding and rocking and shushing. And when you do it all night long, the way they had it in the womb, they're able to sleep better and be calmer. And so this is going back and forth, and it's making sound inside as well. Underneath here is a microphone that's making white noise sound. And that will continue all night long, kind of like your grandma rocking the baby and shushing the baby all night. But then there are microphones all around the baby's head. And if the baby cries, those microphones detect when the, when the baby is crying. Also, you can make the bed move up by just pressing on the button for five seconds. And you'll see it's now going at a faster speed and making a little bit louder sound. That's meant to imitate what you would do. When you're holding the baby asleep, you're rocking back and forth and shushing gently. But if the baby gets upset, you start being a little bit more bouncy and shushing a little bit louder. And if the baby gets really upset, you're bouncing even more and shh, shushing louder. And if the baby gets even more upset, then you just stop everything. You go, this baby needs to eat. And that's the same exact thing with Snoo. It'll go up five different levels to where it moves just a quarter of an inch back and forth, kind of like you driving with your baby on a bumpy road and the baby's in the back of the car. And for many babies, that's the type of sound and motion you need to turn on the calming reflex. And then once the baby calms down, it goes down little by little by little back down to the, the lowest level. And if the baby doesn't calm down after a couple of minutes, the bed just stops because then the bed knows that the baby's hungry or needs a diaper change, needs you needs a hug, needs a holding, and so that's your signal that, um, that it's your turn. So this is not a magic bed. You don't put them in, they sleep eight hours or something like that, but it gives you an extra half hour here and there, maybe an extra hour, two hours of sleep, and usually by two, two and a half months, we're seeing babies go six, seven, eight, nine hours at a stretch at night, which is really helpful for the baby to be able to get into that healthy sleep pattern. Uh, we know from studies that that reduces the baby's risk of obesity at one year of age, for example. Um, and then, of course, it helps you because it allows you to get the sleep that you need to feel rested and to be the, the parent that you want to be during the day.